Now, I think that the biggest challenge in treating neuroendocrine tumors right now in 2022 is that we just don't know how to sequence all of the therapies that we have. So I think that's challenge number one, two, and three. And if you ask any provider, that's probably the first thing they're going to say. Um, that being said, the silver lining is that we have all of these different therapies to play with. Um, so, you know, as I had spoken about, when, when I approach treatment of this disease, one of the first things I look to see is, you know, whether the disease involves only the liver versus the liver and multiple other sites, because that may point me more towards a procedural approach to the liver disease versus more of a systemic approach or a therapy that's going to go to the liver and other sites of disease. Um, but, you know, we also look at the tumor grade and just kind of how someone is feeling and how symptomatic they are to help guide us in terms of what treatment to choose. And that's sort of where kind of our decision-making tree sits right now. A lot of it is on the clinician to assess the patient, understand the pathology, see the location of the disease, and then make a determination on what makes sense in terms of therapy. So I think it's going to be very, very exciting over the next decade when we get all the results from these sequencing data. And then we can actually sit down with our patient and say, listen, you know, yes, I know all these things about you and your disease, but now I have this data to tell me that this is the therapy I should choose first. And maybe this is the therapy I should choose second. Um, so I think that's kind of what the biggest challenge in treating this disease. I mean, I think the other challenge, you know, in, in treating this disease, um, which I didn't speak about too much, but I think is really important to point out is that, you know, these tumors can be really interesting um, in the sense that they secrete hormones in some patients and those hormones can really Really impact the symptoms people have. And so one of the biggest challenges I think that we deal with as clinicians who care for patients with neuroendocrine tumors is that on the imaging and on the lab work, you know, everything looks stable, everything looks good. Um, but then, you know, we're sitting and speaking with our patient and clearly, you know, from a hormonal or symptomatic aspect, they're not very well controlled. And sometimes it can be challenging um, to manage the disease when you know that kind of radiographically it's not active, but symptomatically someone is really, really, you know, struggling. Um, with their cancer. And so that's another kind of gray area in terms of how do you approach management, um, but something that we deal with frequently for our patients.